And welcome back to the 2021 Geico Baseball City Series here at Milwaukee School of Engineering. The team elite from Georgia, one and two record in this tournament, but they made it to Saturday by virtue of that win on Wednesday. Both them and the Louisiana Knights finish one and two, but because team elite won that head-to-head -head game, they are playing here on Saturday. And now we take a look at our U.S. Marines starting lineup. And Will Tippett will lead things off for Team Elite from Georgia. Nazan Zanatello will play shortstop. Dylan Lester is the catcher with Jackson Cook, the son of former NHLer Matt Cook at first base. Todd Hudson will start on the mound. Maddox Milakis, Tyler Holsworth, Oliver Service, Jarrett Bales, and Parker Herndon round out the lineup. And they will be going up against the Cangelosi Sparks. Julius Sanchez, a really exciting prospect for the Sparks, Michael. Yeah, Julius can throw it up into the mid 90s. 90s. He's kind of sits in the low 90s. He's probably the best arm. Fastball slider change. A very athletic slider is the wipeout pitch. It'll be interesting to see if he can find it and locate it. If he does, could be quick innings. Could very well be. They've been saving Sanchez to pitch in this game on Saturday. And now the third place game about to be underway from Milwaukee. And Sanchez first pitch to Will Tippett is a strike. Great way to start off. Will Tippett, a great athlete. We saw him yesterday playing short. So you know if he's up the middle, can probably do a little bit of everything, and he's going to be patrolling the outfield today. Sanchez next offering a fastball slapped foul. Tippett two for eight in this tournament so far. Three runs scored in an RBI. Going to be heading to the University of South Carolina, an SEC commit. Now the 0-2 pitch from Sanchez. Swung on and barely tipped back behind the plate. Well, there was that off-speed pitch that we were talking about. Good location. If you're going to miss early, you want to miss down as you're finding your rhythm, finding that release point on the mound. And now Sanchez again on 0-2. And that one misses just inside. Yeah, great. Great location there, Sanchez. You're like, how are you not swinging at that? <laughs> Started in the zone, two strikes. You're supposed to swing at that. Tippett stands close to the plate. And the swing and a miss, strike three. Good breaking ball from Sanchez, and Tippett retired. Let's take a look at how the Cangelosi Sparks got to down. our third place game on this Saturday. Down. Games began on Wednesday. The Sparks defeated the hitters from Wisconsin 6-2 then beat Team Elite on Thursday. So, of course, this is the second matchup between the two teams. But yesterday, a loss to the Canes, so that put them in the third-place game. Nazan Sanatello, a ground ball to short. High throw to first from Sefcik, and it's over the glove of the first baseman, Flanagan. So, Zanatello will reach with one out. Yeah, I'm sure Cal is thinking, what in the heck happened there? Got in a good position to field it, good position to throw it, and just kind of came out a little bit early, sailed a little high. So a miscue at shortstop and a runner aboard, and that will bring up Dylan Lester. He's the catcher for Team Elite. With a runner aboard here against Sanchez in the top of the first, just underway in our third place game. The Geico Baseball City Series. That pitch gets away from the catcher, Daker, and down to second goes Zanatello. Yeah, Daker did a good job of getting down, but some of these guys aren't used to playing on an all-turf field, and, and you can see the batter's boxes, the catcher's box have new turf, so you never know if there's a seam somewhere in the other. Looked like he was in a good position, but they kind of bounced up on him and got away. Now the runner at second, and the 1-0 pitch is swung on and hit in the air to center field, trailing back as Luka Radicevic, still going, makes the catch, fires back to the infield. Zanatello moves up to third with two away. Good contact there by Dylan. We saw yesterday, too, a couple balls hit to center. A uh, lot of trees in this outfield, but if it gets above the trees, you're unless you're really, really on top of it, you're not sure which way the wind is blowing, and that one seemed to carry pretty far out there to center. Jackson Cook will step in next, the first baseman for Team Elite. As we begin this third place game, these four teams that we'll be seeing today, both in this one and the championship, some of the elite travel baseball teams in the country. 
We mentioned at the top of the show, the Cangelosi Sparks, a team based in south suburban Chicago. Most of the players are comprised from that area of the country with team elite from Georgia. It's a much more national look. They have players from all over the country. Bouncing ball to third, fired across by Rolder in time. And that will bring us to the end of the inning. Bottom of the first one, we come back. Cangelosi coming up. skies on this morning in Milwaukee as we welcome you back bottom of the first inning in our third place game of the Geico Baseball City Series. Let's take a look at our U.S. Marines starting lineup for the Cangelosi Sparks. Crew Bond at the top, Will Flanagan at first base, the powerful Jimmy Rolder is the third baseman. Colin Mowry homeward yesterday, he is the designated hitter. Luka Radicevich in center, Jaden Comia, an Illinois commit at second base. Cal Sefcik, the son of Kevin, playing shortstop. Trace Wierderski, Tommy Atkinson, and the catcher is Brian Daker. Pitching to start this game for Team Elite will be Todd Hudson. That's because, we mentioned off the top of the show, Sean Episcope just got in from another event, so he will pitch later in the game, but we figure to see Todd Hudson for about three innings in this one. What can we see with Hudson? Well, ideally it's three innings. I'm sure the folks from Team Elite are hoping. Uh, yeah, big kid, obviously, 6'6", 220. Really powerful arm. Again, one of these guys that can rush it up there in the low 90s. Um, good fastball slider type pitcher. Good positional player as well. So Crew Bond will lead things off for the Sparks. From Mendota, Illinois is Bond. And first pitch from Hudson misses inside for ball one. Cruz had a nice series going five for seven. Just what you want from your leadoff guy. Three runs scored, but also three RBIs for the little guy. Swings and fouls one back. Even the count at a ball and a strike. The Sparks have had a lot of things happening for them offensively through the course of the pool play in this tournament. Yesterday fell to the Indiana Bulls by a score of seven to five. As Bond laces one into right field for a base hit. Bond on again, and now six for eight in this tournament. Yeah, having a great tournament, great inside-out swing. Kept the hands inside. Again, that fastball rushing up there and just took what the pitcher gave him. Nice little pop to right field, and as any team loves that leadoff guy getting on and trying to be a little bit of a, a nuisance, a pest out there. Let's see what he does. And so now Hudson will work from the stretch right away as Will Flanagan steps in. First pitch outside to Flanagan for ball one. Good take right there by Will. Also having a really nice series. Senior out of Chicago, Illinois. Brother Rice High School where he is a high school teammate of Jack Lausch who plays for this Sparks team but is unavailable today due to another commitment. So a lot of these players from the Sparks play at high schools in the Chicago Catholic League. 2-0 offering, and that one misses way outside, 3-0. So Todd Hudson in danger of putting the first two on. You're at the bottom of the first. Here's the 3-0. Pumps a strike on the outside corner. Yeah, good take. You're not going to be swinging at that, even if you get a green light. That's where you're looking for that one. A little bit up, a little bit in, something you can really drive. Great pitch. Good take by Will. Hudson takes a look. And now here's the 3-1. Runner goes, but it misses outside for ball four. So Bond down to second. Flanagan to first after the free pass issued by Hudson. And it'll bring Jimmy Rolder to the plate. And for Team Sparks, you now couldn't have drawn it up better. You get your leadoff guy Rolder. on, you put a little pressure on him, you put the other team's power pitcher right into the stretch. Good at bat by Will, like you said, worked a good walk. Now you're in a good position with your power guys coming up, three, four, five. 
As you might imagine for a team from suburban Chicago, they do have quite the pipeline to the University of Illinois. And Jimmy Rolder is one of several players on this Sparks team that is committed to play for the Fighting Illini. Takes a first pitch fastball downstairs for ball one. Yeah, and if he looks like he could play football, you're thinking right. This guy looks like the perfect outside linebacker. 6'3", 220, broad shoulders. Hudson's 1-0 pitch. That one misses out of the zone as well. Roller last year for the Cangelosi Sparks hit a home run to left in this ballpark in the championship game which the Sparks wound up falling to the Indiana Bulls. 2-0 pitch is chopped and just foul the third. Yeah, it was a great game last year. Sparks fought their way almost all the way back. Bulls got up early. And you could tell yesterday it was when they played each other a back and forth game to see who was going to get into the championship and who's going to be playing for third. A lot of respect from both sides. Both teams played incredibly hard. And Rolder hits one foul again, third base side. Just one for nine in this tournament so far. Uh, did hit a home run. I'm sure Tyler Thompson, the head coach of the Sparks, would absolutely love to see another home run right here. Well, and the home run was against these guys. So his one hit, one for four with two RBIs in the game that they won on Thursday, five to two. 2-2 pitch and Rolder drives one foul again. So Hudson getting the start today because Episcope just got to the park and will come into this game later. So he's already put two on. He's had Rolder foul off three consecutive pitches on the pull side. What would you go with here? Again, I, I would try outer half. I would try something that has a spin to it. It looks like the change up, the fastball, Rolder sitting. 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss. So Hudson goes with the fastball on the outside half, and Rolder down on strikes for the first out. Yeah, now this is a quality location when you think about it. Catcher saying, let's go now up, but it was up and away Tom after Murray. coming inside a couple times, just like you were talking about Jordan. He's getting a little bit out in front. What do you do? You keep it on the outer half. And so now Colin Mowry, a Louisville commit, who hit a home run yesterday despite the defeat for the Sparks. Two on and one out here in the bottom of the first. And the first pitch from Hudson is pumped over the outside edge for strike one. Yeah, great location right there. This is one, if he can get ahead now, all of a sudden the, 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 the momentum might start swifting, switching to the elite side of the field. Big pitch right here. A one offering and Mowry just able to take off the outside edge. Yeah, very nice take. Quiet feet, quiet hands, that's what you want to see. Which doesn't typically happen for those number four hitters. They're looking to launch, drop that backside. Colin has great balance. Obviously a Louisville commit. Good power, good power to all fields actually. 1-1 one, one pitch runs inside on him now, 2-1. and one. Mowry goes to Lincoln Way Central High School in Mokina, Illinois. Has an opportunity here in the first to change some momentum for the Sparks. 2-1 pitch is hit on the ground to third. It's fielded there, touch on the bag, the throw across the diamond in time, and Team Elite gets out of the inning without a run. Milakis to Cook, and at the end of first, no score. Tomorrow night, the American League Central leading Chicago White Sox finish up their weekend series across town at Wrigley Field. The Chicago City Series concludes at 7 p.m. Eastern on ABC. That's right, ABC will be showcasing Sunday Night Baseball for the first time since ESPN started airing Sunday Night Baseball in 1990. Yesterday, the White Sox picking up a victory in the first game of the three games set against the Cubs, an eight to six game, a wild one at Wrigley Field. So the conclusion of that series, Sunday night, two teams going in, say, opposite directions right now, Mike. Yeah, it, it, whenever those two play in Chicago, there's a lot of bragging rights, but uh, I think all Cub fans are just hoping for close games and maybe taking one. 
And Cub fans have suffered enough over the last couple of weeks. Oh, it, it, yeah, that was very surprising, all the changes. And unfortunately, it started in the offseason. It did. After you Darvish was traded, and then Baez, Rizzo, Bryant all on the move at the trade deadline, along with Craig Kimbrell, who is now pitching for the White Sox. So top of the second inning here. Sanchez back to work against Todd Hudson, who of course is our starting pitcher for Team Elite. Batting in the middle of the lineup as well, a guy with big power. 2-2 offering, swung on a tap foul. Good job fighting that one off. Yeah, Todd, typically you're going to see him in left or right field. Big, <laughs> We saw how big he is on the mound, and you can look at him in the batter's box. When you get those arms extended, when he makes contact, it goes a long way. From Lexington, South Carolina. 2-2 pitch, misses just down and in. Good take, good pitch right there. Julius has a really nice changeup that has a little bit of run, a little bit of fade. He tried it right there, started a little bit low, and a good take by Todd. 3-2 pitch is chopped on the ground to second base, right to Jaden Comillo, who throws across for one out. Nice play by Jaden coming in and getting that. You talk about the Illinois connection with the Sparks. Jaden, another one going to be going to the University of Illinois, just like his big brother and cousin, both of whom have played for the Sparks also. Right, Jared Comia, also Brandon Comia. Brandon, third team, all Big Ten this year for the Illini. That's right. Last year, Jared and Jaden played together for the Sparks program. Brandon, an alum of the Sparks. First pitch outside, Maddox Malakis. Chosen to play his collegiate baseball in Arizona. 1-0 pitch is a strike. The lock is still going to Arizona despite the coaching change that occurred at the U of A. 1-1 pitch swung on and missed. Jay Johnson hired away to LSU. So Chip Hale, who is a Arizona baseball hero, leaving big league ball to go back to college and coach at his alma mater. One ball, two strikes, and a bender just off the outside edge. Good take there by Maddox. Yeah, I, I think you're going to a program that you know is a Power Five conference. You're loving the campus and probably what the school has to offer, but when you can upgrade from a college coach to a major league coach, yeah, pretty easy to say, you know what, I'm fine with still going there. We'll give this ex-major leaguer a chance. Yeah. I think he's going to teach me a thing or two and probably has a few connections to help me get to the next step, next level if I can continue to develop. Absolutely. Chip Hale, a UA infielder in the 80s and won a College World Series there in 86. And most recently serving as the third base coach for the Detroit Tigers, but now gets an opportunity to manage at U of A in a beautiful setting in Tucson. Three, two pitch to Malakis. So breaking ball misses down and in for ball four. Malakis scampers down to first. We're talking about some of the big leaguers. Let's look at some of the alumni of Team Elite that have played in the show, and there are many of them. Adam Frazier was recently traded from the Pirates to the Padres. You see him in his new threads. But Dylan Cease of the White Sox, you know him well, I Mike. I know huh? Dylan well. Great motion right there. Great pitching position. And how about this guy, Rowdy Telez? The team went to the game last night in Milwaukee. Oh, and guess what? Rowdy had a walk-off. How fun is that for these kids? Brewers got a win over the San Francisco Giants. But many alum, alumni rather, of the team elite have gone on to play big league ball. And there are, those are just a few. It's been a very impressive run for Team Elite, cultivating talent and sending them off to bigger things. Well, and it's not just Team Elite. All six of the organizations here, as we were looking at all of them and their history and, and the players they've developed, not just into the colleges, but into the major leagues, it is incredibly impressive. Tyler Holsworth, the 0-1 count, and chops one foul to the right side. Good job by Julius getting in on the hands there. That was a double play. Perfect pitch, jamming him, but uh, just a little bit foul. So now 0-2, Sanchez was ahead of Malakis, but ended up walking him. So we'll see if he's got a put away pitch here for Holsworth. Nice lead by Malakis. 
And that's a beautiful pitch on the outside corner for strike three. Second strikeout in two innings, and again, great location, great movement. This is what we were talking about. This is that wipeout now slider. Then, Comes out is, hard, is, just is, a little bit of lateral is. movement there. Great frame job by the catcher as well. Great job by Brian Dacre. So now two away here at the top of the second inning, and fastball pumped outside on Oliver Service, serving as the extra hitter here in this third place game. Both teams will bat 10. Service fouls one back to the screen. They have a designated hitter and an extra hitter so that these teams can get more guys' opportunities to hit. Exactly. I mean, these kids come a long way. They have a chance to be on TV, chance to play in a great tournament against great competition. And so for all six teams, it was almost mutually understood, let's have 10 guys hitting. One ball, one strike. That one blocked in the dirt by Dacre. Yeah, Dacre very solid, great glove. Great receiver, as we just saw the way he framed it. Talking to Tyler Thompson, he said, this is a classic catcher. Not a lot of balls are going to get by him. Takes a lot of pride keeping the ball in front of him. Now two and two on service. Also works very well with the pitching staff and is He'll look over every now and then if, if, if it's a, a certain situation, a certain count. But for the most part, Sparks are one of the three teams here that let the catchers call the game. Runner goes on the pitch, but Sanchez pulls the string for strike three, and that will retire the side. Two strikeouts for Sanchez in the frame. Middle of the second, no score. Here at Maslowski Park, and the Cangelosi Sparks are playing a little bit with a heavy heart throughout this summer. And the reason for that, you can see the patch on their jersey to honor their fallen teammate, Connor Christian. Now, he had been in the Sparks program since he was eight years old, was a beloved teammate, but passed tragically this summer after he was diagnosed with a brain tumor and died two weeks later. Connor Christian was loved by all of his teammates, a kid that wanted to fly planes in the Air Force, and Connor Christian was very close with several of his teammates who he went to high school with besides playing for this Sparks program. And the team really has not fully recovered from this because how could they? And they've been playing all summer, dedicating this season to Connor's memory. And the patch that you see on their jersey is meaningful in several ways. One, because his nickname was Bear. So you saw the bear on the patch. The other reason is the wings that they placed on there are because of the wings of the planes that he was hoping to fly if he could one day be a part of the Air Force. Uh, of the Air Force. So he is sorely missed by all the people connected with the Cangelosi Sparks program. And they honor him today with the patches on their jerseys as Luka Radicevich gets hit by a pitch and will head down to first. However you can get on is, is what I always said. But uh, yeah, I mean, the patch, it, it, it has a little bit of, of a home plate look because the Bear was a catcher who worked great with the pitchers. It was one of those guys that wasn't the best athlete, but one of the best teammates. And like you said, then you had those lines making it look like an airplane, a, 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 hoping to go to the Air Force. So it's so memorable in, in so many ways, great image. And this one popped up, foul side of first and over to make the basket catch is Cook. Great play over the shoulder by the big first baseman. Good shuffle off the base. Check to, again, great job checking to make sure you don't trip on the base. And then stayed right with it, knew we had room, obviously. Not much help in that visiting dugout or the home dugout telling him how close he got, but uh, <laughs> kind of knew where he was when it came to the field. And again, this uh, AstroTurf and warning track, even though they're both artificial, there's a definite different feel. So as you're running, you can tell when you step on the warning track. He never felt that, so he was able to just keep going after it. A nice play by Jackson Cook, now one away in the inning. And here is Cal Sefcik from Palos Heights, Illinois. He is the son of of Kevin Sefcik, the former big leaguer who played several years in the big leagues for the Phillies. Yeah, you know there's a little baseball talk going on in that house <laughs> the minute that Cal said, yeah, no, I think I do like baseball. Maybe other sports when I'm little, but uh, as he joined the Sparks organization and started to kind of come into his own, you know, how much fun is that for dad to be able to say, yeah. 
I'm here if you have any questions. That pitch gets away from the catcher, Lester, and down to second base goes Radicevich. Now runner in scoring position in a 2-0 count with one out, and there is Kevin Sefcik, seven-year career in Major League Baseball. Yeah, our time just crossed over. He came up in 95. My last year was 96. I was unfortunately at that point uh, with the Blue Jays, but in spring training, we were both in Florida, had to face him a couple times, and a guy being from Chicago, being from Chicago, nice little connection. Absolutely. There's a swing and a miss, two balls, one strike on Sefcik. Yeah, and that's one of those cardinal sins that you get into that 2-0 count, you're starting to think, I'm looking for a fastball, and you forget to say, make the fastball be a strike. And you're swinging even though it's coming because you guessed right. Hudson takes a look at second base. Now delivers 2-1, down low. Kevin Sefcik, the father of Cal, is a suburban Chicago native, went to Andrew High School in Tinley Park, Illinois, and then St. Xavier University in Orland Park before going on to play in the big leagues for seven years. Yeah, and that's one of those great stories. Um, St. Xavier is just, St. Francis are just little division three schools. But for these kids, I, I know for all of these organizations here, even for us with the White Sox, as we have our ACE program and our elite travel, our most senior guys take the most pride in helping guys get to junior colleges, division three, II, division two. II. The division one guys sometimes can take care of themselves. But seeing the kids that love baseball and us being able to develop them a little bit, because if you get to any level of baseball, you have a chance to keep playing. And for his dad, like you said, small division three school, but was able to parlay that to continue to get better through college and then get drafted and just worked his butt off and then had a great major league career. Yeah, what an inspiration for these kids, for the Sparks, seeing a guy that came from their area who was able to play the bigs. 3-2 pitch is ripped down the left field line, but just foul. Great job bringing his hands inside on that fastball. <laughs> kind of thinking, okay, you got me once on a high inside. I'm still going to look for that fastball low inside. Brought the hands in nicely and just was unable to keep it fair. That could have driven in the first run of the game. But instead, it'll be another 3-2 offering from Hudson to Sefcik. And that's hitting the air to left field. On the run is Bales near the line at the wall. It is gone. That ball just kept carrying. And Cal Sepsik a home run to give the Sparks a 2-0 lead. Now that was a great swing. Again, was almost getting ready to say, you know what, Mr. Hudson might want to go away. And he came back in. Sometimes you kind of work both sides of the plate. Again, great job by Cal bringing those hands in. Got it up, and I'm thinking there's a little breeze going out today, the way we saw that one to center, this one going out and left. So Cal Sefcik, his second hit in this tournament. He was one for seven coming in, but drives one out of the park to make it two nothing Sparks, and now Trey Swiderski at the plate. Swiderski is a Louisville commit. And the 0-1 pitch is pumped upstairs. One thing I wonder early in this game, Michael, is that you've got a kid in Todd Hudson who's a very talented pitcher in his own right, but Team Elite was planning to start Episcope, so now Hudson gets the start. Is there any concern about whether he might have been fully ready to make this start today? Well, my guess is that great spot right there, good hard fastball. My guess is that he knew before he went to bed that he was going to be starting. He was one of those power guys that typically is in the bullpen. And I'm sure they just said to him, hey, just give me a couple innings. We'll let Episcope take it from there. That one popped up. And how about that? Pitcher is going to take it himself. Hudson makes the catch on the line for the second out. Yeah, this big guy, you know. He's going to be an outfielder. He's going to take it. Look at those hands getting inside by Cal and then throwing the bat. Great balance. Not out in front, not falling back. Brought the hands in and was able to barrel it up. You're thinking, yeah, it's pretty deep until all of a sudden it goes over that 320 sign. This one chopped on the ground to third, fielded by Malakis to throw across, keeping the bag is Cook, and Atkinson is retired. 
Two nothing. Cangelosi sparks after two after a two run shot by Sefcik. The 2021 Geico Baseball City Series, presented by the United States Marine Corps, is brought to you by Geico. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. The Marines, the battle to belong begins here. And Chevrolet, find new roads. The third inning here at the 2021 Geico City Series. The Sparks from suburban Chicago with the 2-0 lead over Team Elite following a Cal Sefcik two-run homer in the bottom of the second inning. So bottom of the lineup coming up for Team Elite. It'll be Jarrett Bales to lead things off against Sanchez, who takes outside for ball one. And Jared's had a nice little tournament. He's not he's only played two of the three games, but he's three for five and again got three runs scored. So kind of a nice guy to have starting your bottom of the lineup. 1-0 pitch misses way outside. From Gainesville, Georgia. Bales also a pitcher, was pitcher of the year in his region in Georgia for his high school team. And takes a strike on the inside corner. Kind of a late call there from Tim Haldeman, our home plate umpire. Yeah, it looked like Tim was not sure either himself. <laughs> First two pitches low and away, and then that went up and in. 2-1 pitch, just off the edge. Thinking, well, strike ball, what do you think? Okay, I'll give him a strike. I'll give him a strike. He's trying hard out there. That was a good call. That was just off the plate, though, right there. 3-1 pitch. And that time, gets the strike call. Good job of framing. Again, we saw a couple of these catchers yesterday when they're trying to get to that outside corner, having their whole body off the plate. You can't do it. 3-2 pitch fouled back. Talking about pitch framing, it's such a greater emphasis in all levels of baseball now than it used to be, isn't it? Oh my gosh, yeah. And I, I've got to be honest, I am not a big advocate of going down to one knee. I know the catchers are trying to get lower so the umpires can have a better view. 3-2 offering, called strike three. Bales didn't think so, but Sanchez gets the benefit. And three straight strikeouts for Sanchez. We will have two Pro Football Hall of Fame enshrinement ceremonies this weekend because of the pandemic. Tonight, the Centennial Class of 2020 will be inducted. Troy Polamalu, Edger and James are among the many players going in. Coaches Jimmy Johnson and Bill Cower, and the class also includes former Commissioner Paul Tagliabu, the star-studded 2021 class, highlighted by Peyton Manning, Charles Woodson, Calvin Johnson, John Lynch, and at long last, Drew Pearson. will all be inducted tomorrow night, beginning at 7 o'clock. Incredible class of talent. <laughs> Incredible Going class. into the Hall of Fame yes. in football. Parker Herndon at the plate from Bogart, Georgia. And the senior, does he commit to the 2-0 pitch? Going, yeah, going back to the 2-0, he's throwing fastball. He's got to throw a fastball. You see the fastball, you've guessed right, but you got to force yourself to make it be a strike. There's a strike. And then he gets dotted right on the outside corner. Parker's had a rough series here. Hasn't gotten a hit yet. Big power. You can see this guy's arms and his shoulders. He can leave any part of the ballpark when he makes contact. 2-2 offering. Bender just upstairs. Got to run it full. Talking about that great Hall of Fame class of football. Just walking through Milwaukee yesterday, you see the Wisconsin Sports Hall of Fame Hall of Fame plaques, and Charles Woodson's is right up there. Swing and a miss, strike three. Herndon retired, and that is now four consecutive punch outs for Sanchez. Yeah, now this is when you're starting to now feel good. This is why they call him their ace. Right over the top, dotting that outside corner. Good job by Parker. He had his body going to right field. He was trying to hit it that way. That was just a great pitch and great location. So we'll tip it back to the plate. He struck out his first time up. Fouls one back on the first pitch. You said it, Sanchez has been very impressive early on. Well, in talking to the Sparks coaches, they were so excited to have him here on Saturday. That breaking ball is served into left field for a base hit. Dropping in front of Bond, and Tippett on with a two-out single. 
first hit of the day for Team Elite. And again, a nice swing here. I told you Will Tippett was shortstop yesterday, center field today. That slider up in the zone, and he didn't try to do too much with it. Outer half, nice level swing, just taking it right to where it's pitched. And now Nizan Zanatello. Reached on an error, got to third, but was stranded in the first. And takes upstairs from Sanchez. Yeah, Nizan was playing third yesterday that we saw and had a couple really nice plays. Love his movements, love his athleticism. He's playing short today. And guys down in Miami are going to be really happy with this one. And runner goes on the pitch, throw down to second, not in time. So a stolen base for Tippett. And now runner in scoring position. Two outs here in the third. And that was a great job by Brian Daker. I'll tell you what, you can't do much more than this. Dot in the outside corner, got rid of it quickly, a straight throw to second. That's where you just tip your cap and say, Will, nice jump on the pitcher. And this one chopped slowly towards first. And Sanchez on the bag to take the throw from Flanagan. That will retire the side. Runner gets a board for Team Elite, but does not score. 2 0, middle of the third. 2021 Geico City Series presented by the United States Marine Corps. Beautiful shot of this ballpark. Milwaukee School of Engineering's baseball team plays here. This has been the home of the Geico City Series now two straight years. Great place to see baseball, great sight lines. We've got different concession stands around here. Nice, easy place to go in. Get a little AC if you need it. As Brian Daker slaps one into right field for a base hit to start the bottom of the third for the Sparks. There's also a little concert shell over near the side of this park. As you see, Daker, a high fastball, just slaps it down. Exactly. Great job staying back, recognizing that up and away and not trying to do too much. That's one of the things that we have seen over and over with these organizations. Great recognition of pitches, and for the most part, guys doing what is given to them, not trying to do too much. First pitch strike as the lineup turns over, and Crew Bond is back to the plate. Singled in the first, was stranded at second. Yeah, look at that, six for eight. I can't remember ever doing that in the major leagues, and that's just exactly what you want for a team. Your spunky leadoff hitter trying to get on any way he can, and he's just been the epitome of that this whole week. There has to have been a time when you went six for eight. I think it might have been in Little League. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike on Bond. This time he hits one on the ground to third, throw to second for one, turns around the infield. That one gets away from the first baseman, Cook, but it's backed up nicely by the catcher, Lester. So it's a fielder's choice. And Bond now replaces Daker at first. Yeah, good start by Maddox there. Good try at Tyler for second to turn it quickly. Like you said, Jackson, knowing that crew was coming down that line, probably safe, trying to stretch a little bit too far and just off the tip of his glove. Looked like he was going to be safe, even if it was a perfect throw. So one out and a man at first, and Will Flanagan steps in. Five for 11 in this tournament, walked his first time up. He's probably saying, hey, I'm seeing the ball good. Would you please throw a strike? One-0 oh, pitch gets through the catcher and down to second base goes Bond. Lester had that one just bleed right between his legs. And it goes about five feet behind him, but it gives enough time to Bond to get down to second base. Yeah, this is a little bit surprising. He, you know, saw it going down and as he tried to turn the glove over, he literally got it caught in his shin guard. Talk about frustration for a catcher. That's a pass ball, not a wild pitch because he's probably shaking his head like, you've got to be kidding me. And then Hudson comes back and says, all right, I'm not going to throw it low anymore. It's ball three. So Flanagan in the driver's seat. And that 3-0 is a strike. Will Flanagan, another kid from Chicago, the Catholic League, goes to Brother Rice High School, transferred in from Riverside Brookfield. 
playing first base here, but has been an outfielder and a third baseman, both for his high school team and for the Sparks. So very versatile guy. Well, and as you can imagine, these are some of the top organ travel organizations in the nation. So most of these kids are going to be good athletes, not necessarily just a good third baseman. And we're seeing it this whole week where guys, even like Will Tippett, who played a great short yesterday, he's in center field today. Yeah, now 3-2. In fact, when Flanagan got to Brother Rice, his high school baseball coach there, Sean McBride, said he needed a third baseman, so he basically said to Flanagan, you're our third baseman now. Yep. <laughs> Again, <laughs> typical South Side, he's like, whatever you need, coach, put me in there, I'll give it my best shot. 3-2 pitch, bounces away for ball four. This one goes back to the screen. Bond goes down to third, and Flanagan on with the free pass. You've heard me talking about it before. Do not like catchers going down to one knee, especially when there's runners on base. Maybe if there's nobody on base, I can see it to get down low. But when there's runners on base, if the pitcher ever spikes the ball, catchers just don't have that ability to truly get in front and block it with the right technique. And we just saw one right there. Now you're putting your pitcher in a really tough hole with one out and guys on the corner and the number three, four hitters coming up. Jimmy Rolder at the plate, struck out his first time with two on. And this time takes a strike on the inside corner. Well, at least he's consistent. He likes that up and inside corner. So both teams now can say, I don't think that was, but at least it's been a strike both ways. Hudson checks the runners and now the 0-1 to Rolder. And pumps a fastball low. They got Rolder the first time on a fastball away after he fouled off three consecutive pitches to the pull side. One and one with one out here on the bottom of the third and now a throw back to first. So this is that classic chess match that we love in baseball. You saw how they got Rolder out back in the first inning, going in on him and then pulling away from him at the end of the count. We'll see how Hudson and Rolder adjust here. Flanagan's got a nice lead at first base, so he's trying to put himself in a position where he can break up a double play if it's on the ground, really cause some havoc. That ball fouled well out, of, well out of play. Good look by Mr. Cook. Jackson running over there just to make sure, especially, again, because the wind appears to be blowing out. That's one that even though it looks like it's way out of play, go ahead, if you're the first baseman, go over there, double check it, make sure it doesn't come back. See, there's that lead. That's a good lead. Now you're putting pressure on the pitcher, thinking about you. One, two pitch to Rolder. Cold strike three on the inside edge. And a big strikeout for Hudson. Yeah, you want to talk about the perfect time to get one. Maybe off the dish. Great job of framing that. Second out, like you said, that's a big second out. And for Jimmy Rolder, he's just like, all right, come on. Are you kidding me? Frustrating start to this one for him. And now Colin Mowry swings and fouls one right back towards us. And that was that hanging slider. That was one that he hit yesterday well out in deep left center field. Got jammed the first time up, but was able to get the barrel out in front. Mowry grounded into a double play his first time. Can't hear with two outs. A one pitch and fouled back towards us again. I'm just going to make something known here. You are the former big leaguer. I am not. So if the ball somehow makes its way into the booth, I'm expecting you to make the play. I got you covered. <laughs> not so good a hitter, even though I got to play for seven years. I could definitely run him down in the outfield and catch him. So I definitely have you covered if it's coming our way. Well, ball's two strikes. Runner goes from first, but it doesn't matter. It's cold strike three on Maori to end the inning. So the Sparks had a great opportunity to score, but Hudson with back-to-back -back strikeouts to strand the runners. Two nothing in favor of the Sparks after three, but a nice job by Hudson. We've talked about Julius Sanchez, uh, another Illinois commit. He can run it up there to 96, but I, I think if you recall at the top of the hour, I said his wipeout pitch is the slider. He's got five strikeouts. 
And when you can put it underneath the hands of a guy going to University of South Carolina, slide around the outside corner, and then you can come back with a ball in the low to mid 90s. Great locations. You're going to have some success on the mound. What do you think, Jordan? Absolutely. Sanchez, five strikeouts, a hit and a walk today. And now back to the mound for the fourth inning here with his team leading 2-0 in the third place game of the Geico Baseball City Series. And pumps a pitch on the outside corner for strike one to Dylan Lester. Lester is an Oklahoma commit and a catcher who calls his own game, which I know is something that you like. Yeah, I love it. At these young levels, you know, you want coaches that are going to develop players, whatever, whatever position, pitcher, infielder, outfielder, but for a catcher to talk with these coaches and say, here's the game plan. Here's what our pitcher throws well. I need you to start thinking about this, because at some point, if you can continue to develop, you're going to have to do it anyways. Called strike three, Lester down looking. Yeah, another great hard slider right on that outside corner. That would be number six on the day. That's right. And now Sanchez has struck out four of the last seven batters he's faced. Jackson Cook steps to the plate, takes a fastball outside for ball one. Jackson's dad, not a baseball player, but a heck of a hockey player, 17 years in the National Hockey League with the Stanley Cup. That's exactly right. His dad is Matt Cook. Played for a long time with the Vancouver Canucks, also the Pittsburgh Penguins. Had a year mixed in there with Washington and a couple with the Wild, but with the Penguins, able to hoist Lord Stanley's Cup. And a great hockey photo, because there's a tooth missing. You're not exactly a real right. hockey player unless you got at least one missing. And that's hit into right field and down up against the wall in the corner. Cook racing into second base, firing back to the infield Swiderski, and it's a double for Jackson Cook. Great, not just good, great piece of hitting here. Clearly, Mr. Sanchez is overpowering people. More strikeouts on the outer half of the plate. And here's the fastball down in the outer half, and he just took what was given to him. Another great example of some great teaching, great education, recognizing that fastball away and not trying to pull it, stand up double in the right field corner. Should we call that a one-timer? No, I'm, I'm watching it. <laughs> I was going to say two-timer, but no, yeah, that's definitely that's a one-timer. Anytime Jackson Cook comes to the plate, we can try to throw it out. There you go, I, and I totally agree. Todd Hudson now chops one up the middle. That's a base hit. Cook around third. He's going to test the arm, running towards the plate. The throw not in time. And down to second goes Hudson. It's 2-1. Team elite on the board. And our first mistake defensively. You know, a good pitch, great piece of hitting by Mr. Hudson. Just taking what's given to him, using the turf, going up the middle. But unfortunately, you can't be missing the cutoff man, Luca. You've got a slower runner, so yeah, you've got a chance to throw him out, but this is where you've got to hit the cutoff man because Todd was not thinking about going to second until he saw the ball clearing those cutoff men and then just jogged in. Luca Radicevich in center field. And threw home, but it allows Hudson to get into second base. And the next pitch is hit in the air by Maddox Malakis to right. Under it is Swiderski to make the catch, tagging it second and heading for third is Hudson. He'll get there as the throws off the line. Good job of base running by Todd. Not a bad swing by Maddox. Again, unfortunately, if that ball was hit to left, we might have seen a two run homer again, but good job getting it in out there. Nice play by Trey. So Tyler Holsworth with two outs and a run in. Really the first time in this game that Team Elite has gotten something cooking against Sanchez. Who for a lot of this game has been quite dominant. Yeah, this is where he started his four strikeout run. So I'm sure Tyler's like, all right, what did I learn last time? How do I make an adjustment here? And again, two outs, who cares? I got a guy on third, I just got to get a base hit. Oh no, pitch inside, almost got Holesworth. Yeah, the other interesting thing is as a team, if you get a pitcher into the stretch where he's got his rhythm in the windup, can you take advantage of that? And so far, Elite has done it. 
2-0 pitch, pumped outside, 3-0. Holdsworth, who saw his high school team in the greater Atlanta Christian area, that's, their, that's the high school. They won the Region 5 AAA championship back in April. No surprise when you have so many elite players that their high school teams are quite good across the board. Yeah, and it's neat to see in talking to all the coaches as we were able to this last week and the week before that most of every one of them is a leader on their team, not just a good player. 3-1 pitch, it's downstairs, ball four. So Holsworth reaches with a free pass from Sanchez. And now with runners at the corners and two outs, Oliver Service will come to the play. And that was a very nice block. Dacre knowing there's a guy on third. Good position, smothered it. No chance for that ball to get away or the run score. Service struck out his first time. Runner at third base is Hudson. He's responsible for the RBI single that scored Cook earlier this inning. Holsworth just reached with a walk. Runner off of first, now dancing between first and second. They don't even see the runner trying to score. Hudson scores to tie the game, and now racing down to second. Out at second is Holsworth, but he manufactures a run to tie it for Team Elite. All knotted up at two, halfway home. How about that base running from Team Elite? We are tied at two in the bottom of the fourth inning in Team Elite with some elite base running to manufacture the tying run. Exactly right. I mean, at this point, it's almost like they're saying, hey, we want to get this game tied. We're going to put some pressure on the Sparks. And the Sparks were almost of the mindset of, who cares? It's the third inning, fourth inning. Let's get this guy out. We know we're going to score some more. I kind of disagree with it. If you run that properly, you should be able to get him out and not let the run score. But at least at this point, all tied up. And today's player to watch is brought to you by Geico, and that is Sean Episcope. We promised you he was going to pitch, and here he is, kid right out of Chicago from Latin High School who was playing in another event over the last three days, comes in this morning, arrives at the ballpark, and they said, kid, you're going in in the fourth, and here he is. Well, this is just the way they wrote it up. They were hoping that Todd could get them three innings. Worst case was two, again, coming out of the bullpen, giving everything they got, and then they were gonna try to ride Episcope as long as possible. Three, ideally, and if he can close out the game, they're gonna let him go. Luka Radicevic leads things off, and now quickly behind 0-2. Getting ahead, which is what you wanna see, coming out of the bullpen or as a starter. Can I get on top of the ball? Can I get these ahead of the hitters? Can I put them in that defensive mode, not offensive mode? Now here's the 0-2. Fastball pumped high and outside. One of the strengths of Sean really is that he has, a, again, one of those incredibly high spin rates. So he's able to throw a ball in the upper part of the strike zone that really planes, doesn't dip at all. It gets past a lot of hitters that think they can catch up with it. 
Two and two now. As Episcopes goes back to work. That's chopped. Just foul of third. See Episcope. Looks like he's wearing a Fitbit or a watch there. Well, sure it, does. We're not kidding. He literally just arrived. Right, making sure he's on central time and his body is going to be <laughs> responding properly. 2 2 pitch, swung on and missed. Great curveball. Starting on the outside part of the plate, maybe just on the fringe. Great drop. 12 6 rotation. So Episcope gets. Radicevich for the first out, waving now at that curveball. And now Jaden Comia, the second baseman. And a first pitch strike. Episcope, as we mentioned, from the Latin High School in Chicago. So didn't have too far to travel from home, but was playing in another tournament and just talking to Jamie Crane, the coach for Team Elite, they've really not seen a whole lot of Episcope. They've seen him on video, but they wanted to get him an opportunity to pitch in this tournament. As Comia flies one in the left center field, and that ball is missed in center field by Tippett, and down to second goes Comia. Great hustle by Jaden. Again, it's one of those things that you uh, Head is down, got that fastball up and in. You thought you could definitely hit a line drive to left or center. He popped it up, but he put his head down. He ran hard and got into second base. Yeah, tip it right there, calling off Bales. Bales doing a good job of going back. Now again, tip it dropping that glove below the shoulder. That is a cardinal sin in the outfield. You want to catch it above your shoulder so you can watch it all the way into the glove. For some reason, he think he probably felt like I've got it. Dropping the glove down, a okay, little bit of a wind gust, misses it. Man on second, let's see what the Sparks can do. It's partly cloudy here in Milwaukee, but a little bit of a glare in the sky, and despite the sunglasses, unable to track it. So now a runner at second. Cal Sefcik homered his first time and rips one foul in towards the bullpen. 0-1. Yeah, this is tough as a hitter. You just hit a home run. You're feeling good. You've, you've anticipated a fastball. You got it right, and you pulled it foul. It's like, okay, dude, get the hands inside again. Keep this one fair. You're seeing it good, small, quiet step. Let the hands fly. And another fastball on the outside corner. And quickly, it's 0-2. And, and again, that was that high spin rate. That was that good power fastball again, up and away, hitting the top of the zone. Awfully hard for hitters to stay on top of those pitches. Episcope really can run it up there in the 90s. That fastball away. But his catcher Lester nodding back at him saying, that's fine. Yep, I, this is exactly where I want it. I want it off the plate because we are way ahead in the count, not trying to hit a corner. Let's see if he's going to chase. One, two, curveball called strike three. Sefcik is down. Two strikeouts in the inning for Episcope and now two away. And I tell you what, there's a reason that Dylan Lester is going to Oklahoma. This kid is calling a great game behind the plate. Three fastballs, one that was rip foul, showed him one off the plate at 0-2. So now as a hitter, you're thinking, all right, well, he's come in, he just went away, I'm gonna start looking in. And not only was it away fastball, it was away curveball, totally buckled him. Another fastball pumped over the outside edge. As Trey Swiderski gets his opportunity against Episcope. Right fielder popped out to the previous pitcher, Hudson, his first time. A one pitch is hit in the air, foul right side. Cook navigating and makes the catch on the Warnick track. Tied at two after four here in the third place game in the Geico Baseball City Series. Tomorrow night, the American League Central leading Chicago White Sox finish up their weekend series across town at Wrigley Field.
Chicago City Series concludes at 7 p.m. Eastern on ABC. That's correct. ABC will be showcasing Sunday Night Baseball for the first time since ESPN started airing Sunday Night Baseball back in 1990. White Sox and Cubs after the Sox took game one of the series. I would imagine that a lot of the kids playing for the Sparks will be interested in watching that game tomorrow night. More than likely. In Chicago, there's there's a few of us, like the two of us, that kind of root for both teams and hope both teams do well. Now, when they play each other, yeah, you've got your more favorite. I know for you, it's the Cubs. For me, it's the Sox. But uh, all these kids, again, growing up in Chicago, there's probably a very strong affiliation one way or the other. And my guess is because these are Southsiders, they're more for the Sox. Yeah, that, that would be my guess. And Sanchez back to the mound and throws a first pitch strike to Oliver Service. Yeah, getting back to last half inning, again, service looked really overpowered by Sanchez. So I'm sure Jamie was thinking, the head coach for the, the Team Elite was thinking, hey, let's make sure we have a chance at getting one. And it worked out very well for them. We're all tied at two. Absolutely. 0-2 from Sanchez. Swing and a miss. Went high in the strike zone. Service can't catch up. And another strikeout for Sanchez. Tell you what, Mr. Sanchez has it working. This was a mistake, almost a backup slider. But again, as a hitter, sometimes Oliver's probably thinking, okay, 0-2, let me shorten up, let me battle, let me think about going to right. And all of a sudden you see that spin and you're like, let me just pop it to right. No, it backs up, strike three. Seven punch outs now for Sanchez. One out here on the top of the fifth inning. 1-0 pitches hit in the air. Radicevich on the run in right center. He's not going to get there. Swiderski will pick it up in right. Fires back to the infield, but it's a double for Jarrett Bales. Jarrett again having a great tournament. Three for five coming in, even though he struck out in the first at bat in the third inning. He really did a nice job again, keeping those hands inside. Taking a pitch that gives him an opportunity to drive one gap to gap type power. Good speed, got into second pretty easily. And now Parker Herndon now will be next. First pitch outside for ball one. Herndon now over nine in this Geico Baseball City Series. But one thing that his coaches told us was that this kid has the power to leave the park at any time. Yeah, you look at that body, solid. All the way top down. It was sort of a middle of the order, I think, earlier in the tournament. They've lowered him just to try to take some pressure off, make him feel like, hey, don't worry about it. You don't have to be our power home run guy. Because again, just like you said, they know if he sees that ball up and away, he can take it out to right center. If he takes it up left, up and in, he can take it out to left center. Again, great job back here blocking by Brian Dacre. Guy on second base, he's not down on one knee. He's got two slides over and, oh, that's why you have a face mask. Good thing that they have a face that's mask. That's a very good thing. <laughs> His mom and dad especially are saying that right now. Yes. Especially too, because since this is an all turf field, you're going to get a lot more hops yep. than you might on dirt. 2-2 two -two pitch misses away. Count runs full on Herndon. Well, and Dakers made a nice adjustment, too. He had that one in the first inning that kind of snuck away. But after that, he has been able to smother everything. 3-2 pitch. They try to go inside corner with the curveball, but just in. And so Herndon. Issued a free pass. Only the second walk on a day and a pitch in a location that has been called a strike earlier. I think because Dacre was setting up outside, you know, you, when you miss a pitch by the full width of the plate, sometimes an umpire just for nothing else says, hey, you don't deserve it, even though it might have hit the corner. So Will Tippett, one for two, singled and stole a base his last time. Takes down and in for ball one. Think about the trajectory of this game. Early on, the Sparks got the early lead. They had opportunities to score more and did not. Now Team Elite 
here in the fifth inning with an opportunity perhaps to move ahead of the Sparks. But you think about a couple of opportunities that the Sparks had early with a couple of runners on, one out or no outs, and did not score. Lost opportunities. I guarantee all of that Team Elite coaching staff is reminding these kids that exact point. Team Elite got ahead in the game on Thursday, one nothing, and the Sparks, again, couple errors by Team Elite, but the Sparks scored one in the fourth, two in the fifth, two in the sixth, to all of a sudden go from being down to being tied to taking the lead. Guarantee it probably felt the exact same way, and right now, Sparks have to do something to say, okay, we've lost some momentum, we've lost some opportunities, we still got a couple more at bats. Let's just make sure we hold them here, get back to our basics, and let's take care of business. Tyler Thompson went out to talk to Sanchez and his infield. Tip it guarantee is like, look, <laughs> please give me something I can hit because I kind of screwed up in center field. Luckily it didn't hurt us, but I'd love to have everyone think of me in a more positive light than missing a simple fly ball. I think you're right. Here's the 202 tip it. And that's laced into center field for a base hit. Coming around third is Bales. He's going to test Rata Savage. The ball is cut off. Runner scores, and Team Elite leads it 3-2. to two. RBI single for Will Tippett, and he does redeem himself. Yeah, again, a nice piece of hitting here. Good look. I mean, it's a fastball down, but he didn't try to do too much with it. Saw it, took it right back up the middle, kept the hands inside. Short swing, base hit. Great secondary jump, second base there by Jared Bales, too. I mean, you can clearly see this guy, left fielder today, but nice and athletic, probably no more for his feet in his glove. Good, solid bat. So Julius Sanchez being taken out by Tyler Thompson. We'll take a break with him. 3-2, team elite has moved on top of the Sparks here in the fifth. Three-two team elite leads the Sparks in the top of the fifth inning here at the third place game of the Geico City Series. And Dylan Warda, committed to Wichita State, comes in for Julius Sanchez. Nice big lefty, nice smooth motion. Kind of upper 80s, fastball mid to upper 80s, but the curveball is what he's best known for. Going to be a shocker. So he's hoping to get that ground ball here and let the Sparks get out of this inning only down by one. So Warda comes in and he'll face Nizan Zanatello first. One out and two on and the first pitch is a strike on the outside corner. We talked about the smooth, easy delivery. Naz 0 for 2, but looking to get another run across the board. Pumps a fastball right by Zanatello there. Yeah, that's the one that Naz wants back. That was down the middle. That was the one to take back up the middle. Having a nice series, playing a solid defense. 0-2 pitch, both runners go. Throw down to third is not in time. Parker Herndon swiping third. An aggressive base running for Team Elite pays off. Now Herndon is kind of bouncing around. We saw him as you were looking at the pitcher. When you're bouncing like that, clearly you're trying to time things right. If you can time it right, you go. If you don't, you just go back to second. He timed it right, got a great jump, and was able to get in there pretty easily. Nifty slide there, too. Yes. Able to stay to the far side of the bag. And Rolder couldn't apply the tag fast enough. Two two pitch from Warda. Zanatello fights it away. Good job right there, asking the umpire, was that a strike? It's like, hey dude, you know what? Whether it was or it wasn't, you swung, so it was a strike. <laughs> I would if I'm a hitter, I never trust what the umpire is gonna say to me. If I swung at it, it had to be a strike. Two two pitch upstairs. It's a good way to look at it mentally, right? Well, and again, I think both teams have seen this umpire kind of call a couple on the outside corner, kind of call a couple on the inside corner. So as the hitter, it's like, hey, I just got to recognize the ball and make sure I put it in play. I got a chance to get two in here. That one pumped foul again by Zanatello. 
Yeah, good pitch at the top of the zone. That's the one that Nazan probably wants back. If nothing else, that should have been a fly ball in the outfield and another run scored. Looking for his first hit today. That one well outside for ball four. So Warda trying to expand the zone. Zanatello would not offer, and now the bases are loaded. One out here in the fifth. Team Elite taking the lead on an RBI single from Will Tippett. And now Dylan Lester, who's 0 for 2. Huge opportunity here for Team Elite. That fastball strike on the outside corner. Dotting the corner, but you got bases loaded. You've just taken the lead. You scored the last three runs of the game, and there's only one out. One of your best hitters, your number three hitter up right now. You're expecting him to come through in some way, shape, or form. That one hit foul, foul of third. Rolled her with a nice dive to stop it. The third base umpire, Kevin Johnson, very confidently signaling a foul ball. Yeah, this is an incredible play. Clearly fouled, but a great job by Mr. Roller getting over there. Jimmy on the balls of his feet, right as that ball is crossing the plate. A little crow hop, little hop, ready step, whatever it is, he's ready to go in any direction. Made a great play even though it was foul. 0-2 pitch down to the dirt. Yeah, change up that just, unfortunately that time, Dylan slowed his whole body down. That was in the strike zone. Dylan probably crushes it. Good thing that it was low. You want that same arm action. You want that ball coming out looking like a fastball. One, two pitch, another breaking ball and good discipline by Lester to lay off. Yeah, that was that wipeout curve ball that we had talked about earlier. Great job by Mr. Lester not swinging at that. Started in the zone and snapped hard just out of it. Sparks got two in the second. They took the early advantage. Team Elite got two runs back in the fourth to tie the game. They've now moved ahead here in the fifth. A run in on a Tippett RBI single. And now with the bases loaded and one out, a chance to extend the lead here in our third place game. Lester swings and hits this one in the air to left. Bond racing in. And cannot come up with the ball, but it's a foul ball. A bit of miscommunication there as Bond and Rolder and Sefcik all went for it. Bond was the one racing in from deep in left field, but unable to come up with the snap. Well, this is Bond's ball, definitely. Inches from being foul. Not sure what happened there. Again, Sefcik kind of covering his eyes, Roller doing a good job of saying no, but then when Roller looked down, it was like, wait a minute, is he gonna get there? So it opens the door for Dylan Lester. Huge opportunity. Here's the 2-2. Down and away, and that'll run the count full. Yeah, and not even close. Dylan's not gonna be offering something that's bouncing in front of the plate. Good job again behind the dish, blocking. Brian Daker earning his stripes, so to speak, in this game. Yeah. That one is lifted in the air to left center field and deep. Bond on the run. That one will bounce over the fence. And that's going to clear two. Runners at second and third and team elite now will lead it five to two. Lester with a two run double and makes the Sparks pay. Yeah, Dylan had to come in. You can tell, not feeling comfortable with the changeup, not really be having any command on that curveball. So he had to throw a strike, bases loaded, right down the middle, a little bit up. Dylan Lester saying, thank you for that second opportunity. Not even taking a stride, just saying, again, all I got to do is get this ball up in the air. I got to make sure I get one in. Thank you for giving me that second opportunity, and boom, bases loaded, double. Now Jackson Cook doubled and scored last inning for Team Elite. 1-0 pitch is hit in the air right side. Flanagan and Comia both going for it. Flanagan will make the catch. Just down to the outfield grass, two away. 
big pitch by, right here by Dillon. Needs one more, got to get out of this inning, making sure there's no more runs across. Now for Dillon, he's got that lefty, lefty. We'll see if he can bring out that curveball, maybe find that strike zone. And now Hudson. First pitch strike from Wardo. It's not easy on any level to have to come into a game when there's runners on base in a critical moment. Gives up two runs, but if he can hold them there, it keeps the sparks in shouting distance. Exactly. A what, a boot, and a bang, as we used to say in the White Sox and the Blue Jays. Hey, three runs, we've got this. You know what, walk, boot, and a bang, we're right back in it. Pitchers, just hold them there. We'll figure out a way to get some short, get some runs for you. So now a quick meeting at the mound between Dacre and Wardo. What do you think Dacre was telling him? Yeah, one of two things. A, they're either picking up my signs. I'll, let's switch up what you know the indicator is. But B, what do you feel comfortable with? Let's wipe this guy out. Let's let's get you back into that rhythm so that you can not only take care of this inning but the next couple. One one pitch, swung on and missed. And Warder right there may have said, you know what? I'm feeling really good with my fastball. Stick with it. If I'm going to throw the curveball, I might spike one. We got a guy on third. One two pitch fouled away. Now, if I'm Warda and I'm not feeling comfortable with that curve or that changeup, I've got to have enough command that I can move that fastball inside, outside, high and low. One two pitches chopped on the ground is short. That's fielded there by Sefcik. The throw across gets him, and that will retire the side. But three runs come across for Team Elite, and they've got the lead, middle of the fifth. Inning for Team Elite. Julia Sanchez just dealing, and all of a sudden, a nice job of hitting. A walk. I'll just take a base hit. That's fine. Not going to do too much. Oh, a great jump, putting some pressure on the Sparks. Barely in there, nice job. And then when the reliever comes in, the big bang. Base is loaded, ground rule double, and guess what? The momentum has shifted. Team Elite up five to two. Dylan Lester with that big knock, the two run double to make it five two. But fortunately for the Sparks, they were able to keep Team Elite right there, so. A three-run deficit as we go to the bottom of the fifth here. And Tommy Atkinson at the plate against Episcope. Team Elite did not score until the fourth, but they get two in the fourth, three in that fifth. And that's why they're in the driver's seat now as Atkinson grounds one into left field for a base hit. First hit of the tournament couldn't come at a better time. You can see him going back to that first base coach, probably like, are you flipping kidding me? It took this long <laughs> to get a hit. Not a bad pitch by Episcope. And again, using the turf, line drive, scooting it through the infield. And again, the Sparks, ironically, who won on Thursday 5-2, to two, find themselves behind 5-2 to two with three more rounds of at-bats up. Brian Dacre now singled his first time and takes a strike on the outside corner. Episcope, since he's come into the game, Mike, has really done a nice job of pumping a fastball over the corner getting ahead of hitters. Yep, always puts you in a command position. That first pitch, every coach just about that I've ever played with or against has said the best pitch a pitcher can throw is strike one oh, on one the first pitch. pitch. Yep. yep, swung on and missed. And now it's 0-2 on Dacre. Episcope, lots of opportunities here. Again, are you trying to keep your pitch count down, kind of go for a corner with your fastball? Can you throw one of your off-speed pitches? 0-2 pitch just off the corner. Not a bad pitch, not a bad location. Again, Dylan Lester saying, hey, way ahead, let me get off the plate, not on a corner, and see if someone chases. That breaking ball just upstairs. Good take by Decker, too. Saw it out of the hand, took his hands to it, and realized, nope, it is going to be a little high. 
almost influences the umpire to say, hey, look, I'm tracking this, I'm following it, I'm not swinging because it's coming in over the top of the zone. He might catch it at the top of the strike zone, but where it's crossing the plate, it's high. And you know what? These catchers, sometimes the umpires just kind of like them more than any other player out there. <laughs> Catcher's blocking all those balls so the umpire never gets hit. I think Keeping them safe. More. I know. Inside, Dinker saying that almost hit him. But now three and two. We'll see what Atkinson does at first. I wouldn't see him running here being down by three, but you never know. You want to keep out of a double play. Great pitch, great piece of hitting. Daker again, seeing that coming in right on that outside corner, just kind of fighting it off, saying, hey, give me another chance. Give me a ball I can hit. Daker kid who was on their third level team last summer. A catcher left the program to give him an opportunity and taking advantage of it. 3-2 pitch outside for ball four. Racing down to second. Just in case is Atkinson, but he'll stop there. And now Daker aboard after the free pass. We will have two Pro Football Hall of Fame enshrinement ceremonies this weekend. Tonight, the Centennial Class 2020, Troy Polamalu, Edgerin James, Jimmy Johnson, Bill Cower, and also the former commissioner, Paul Tagliabu. And that is tonight, tomorrow at seven. We've got another one with Peyton Manning, Charles Woodson, Calvin Johnson, John Lynch, Drew Pearson. Basically, you should watch because there's a lot of great players <laughs> and coaches going in. Got to watch. The coaches, the, the players, again, just smile on my face remembering all of the, all the great memories all of those players and coaches provided. Iconic yes. coaches and players. Yes. The feeling Peyton Manning speech will be fairly entertaining. <laughs> Hopefully no nationwide <laughs> references, but yeah. Will Brad Paisley be in attendance? There you go. I've got to believe so. Maybe flying in on a helicopter with Peytonville. <laughs> Crew Bond at the plate. Big opportunity here for the Sparks. Well, and the way we talked about Tippett, hoping to make up for that drop ball in center field, I got to believe Crew is saying, hey, give me a chance to make some contact, get a hit. I, want, I don't want that everyone thinking about me and that foul ball as the memory they take away from this tournament, especially being on national TV. Two ball, one strike pitch, and that is on the corner for Episcope to even the count. Nobody out, and after three runs in for Team Elite in the top half of the inning, the Sparks now with an opportunity with two on and no outs here in the bottom of it. Bond with a chopper foul. It's been impressive to watch from both of these teams, Mike, how they are taking advantage of the surface they're playing. Yeah, no, very true. You got to understand your elements. You got to understand your ballpark. Again, in the in playing in the major leagues, there were certain ballparks you just knew ball was going to fly. You could play shallow because if it was hit over your head or in the air, it was a home run. 2-2 pitch, rocketed into left center field. That's a base hit. Coming around to score and scoring easily on the play is Atkinson. It's an RBI single for Crew Bond, and it's 5-3. Yeah, second hit on the day, brings in a run. If for nothing else, the Sparks have to now believe, hey, we've stopped the momentum. They've scored five in a row. We are now back on the board, first and second, nobody out, and Crew Bond just taking a nice inner half pitch, something you should be making good contact, but keeping his hands inside, driving it in the left center, making sure one scores, and still first and second, nobody out. And now Will Flanagan. Bond and Flanagan have been on every time up today. Flanagan a good bunt throw down to first in time. But he advances both runners, and now one away. Playing a little small ball. Again, first and second. Might have been thinking, let's go for a bunt for a hit. If it was a little bit harder, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened. Worst case, it's a sack. Best case, bases are loaded. Great job by the catcher, bouncing out there and making sure Dylan Lester does a great job of getting it down to first, getting the out. You've got, again, now your three, four hitters coming up. 
two runners in scoring position. Well, Jimmy Roller gets another opportunity. He's had yep. a little bit of a frustrating day so far. Struck out twice with two on. Now bats with two on yet again. First pitch outside for ball one. Jimmy Roller, the Illinois commit, with big time power and has the ability to hit one out and give the Sparks the lead. Well, you mentioned earlier, he hit one out in that championship game last year. This could be a huge moment if he can do it again. 2-0. Oh. Yeah, that's where Dylan Lester is trying to sell the pitch that's off the plate. You can hear a lot of the parents chirping, kind of saying, oh, if he said it was a good pitch, it must have been a good pitch. No, that wasn't a good pitch. <laughs> Just off the plate. 2-0 pitch, pulled the string, and rolled her waves through it. And a great location, down and away. Two Chicago kids. Episcope, Latin High School in Chicago, rolled her. Goes to Marist High School. 2-1 pitch is lifted in the air to center field, barely deep, tip it going back, makes the catch. Tagging from third and coming in to score is Daker, and it's 5-4. Advancing to third is Bond. So now the tying run, 90 feet away for Colin Mowry. Yeah, Jimmy, if he waits a fraction longer, this might be right center and still rolling. Tippett does a good job of getting back on it, making sure the catch hit in the cutoff man. First pitch strike on Mowry. Great Gotta give location. the Sparks credit too, right? Because they fall behind by three runs after they had the lead for much of the game, and they come right back with this response and have a chance to tie. Yeah, it does speak volumes to the kids, volumes to the character. Again, I'm sure they were thinking yesterday, we were so close to being in the championship game. Last year, we were so close to winning the whole thing. This year, how is it slipping away from us? And now, responding by saying, let's just get out there and keep swinging and put some pressure on them. And Mowry grounds out as Zanatello throws across to Cook, and that will retire the side. But two runs come in for the Sparks, who now trail by one, five to four, Team Elite after five. For 2021 Geico City Series presented by the U.S. Marines, and it's been a good one, five to four, Team Elite from Georgia leading the Cangelosi Sparks from Illinois as we go to this sixth inning. Dylan Warda back out to the mound. Take a look at the records of these teams. The Sparks two and one, lost to the Bulls yesterday. Indiana Bulls will face the Canes baseball team from Virginia in our championship game. That will be coming up at one o'clock central time, two Eastern, right here on ESPNU. Stay with us all morning and afternoon long. Some of the best high school travel teams in the nation meeting here in Milwaukee. Pitch inside on Maddox Malakis, who is 0 for 1 today with the walk. Other teams that were here were the Louisiana Knights and the Milwaukee, Wisconsin hitters. So the hometown team, unfortunately for them, did not make it to the Saturday. Last year they did. And Louisiana Knights drove in a very long 20 hour arduous drive, but did pick up a win in this tournament. And they played so well. I mean, they're gonna go home thinking, yes, we played with some of the best across the country, lost by one run, lost by one run on Wednesday, lost by one run on Thursday, was able to come back and win the game on Friday. Uh, but played, again, the Canes played against Team Elite, played them really well that, uh, again, a, a play here, a mistake there. I mean, these kids are still in high school, and, and we've seen both of these teams to this point have had opportunities that they've missed and had opportunities that they've made. Malakis into left field, crew bond there for the catch, one away. You hope that they're going home and just taking away the great memories that they're going to make here. Again, it's fun for some of these kids that might be like on a, an age level younger that are filling in for a couple guys who might be at other exposure events. You can see the Bulls. 
very classy all black being a Sox, you know, anything all black, <laughs> I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And being from Chicago, the Bulls obviously love my Bulls. That's right. Well, and they've got the black and red for you there. There too. you go. All one pitch is lined to first, caught by Flanagan, two away. Tyler Holsworth down. Yeah, great piece of hitting right there by Tyler. Again, recognizing that pitch, outer half, line drive. Yeah. Nice play. Now all of service. Very First pitch swinging for strike one. Yeah, Oliver service, two strikeouts today. So looking to change his fortunes. Florida bounces that one in. Service was in center field yesterday when Tippett was at short and again was kind of a, a spark for them to get going middle of the game, turn their fortunes around. Outfielder out of Detroit. Service. Two quick outs here in the sixth. 2-1 pitch popped up and foul out of play. I got you covered. I got you covered. <laughs> Way out of play. You are a defensive specialist. Among your many talents in your big league career. Another 2-1 pitch is fouled now 2-2. Two two. And Warda strikes him out with the breaking ball and the inning is over. So a one, two, three frame for Dylan Warda in the sixth. But the Sparks have work to do. They're trailing by one, by four. Team Elite the lead. That's an elite curveball from Warda. Welcome back to the 2021 Geico City Series presented by the United States Marine Corps. Beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the home bridge. Team Elite, the 5-4 lead over the Sparks in our third place game as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. You wouldn't be allowed to go to an event in Wisconsin. Without cheese curds. You have to have cheese curds. Fried cheese curds, yes. of course. Though I did notice at that stand. You can get fried cheese curds or cheese curds that are not fried. Did they have both options? They did. I didn't think that was a thing up here. <laughs> Apparently it is. I thought they had to be fried. And I think the best ones are fried. Well, there, there you go. Luka Radicevic leading things off here in this bottom of the sixth for the Sparks. Trail by a run. Sean Episcope back out on the mound. Luka led off that second inning, getting on base. Sefcik, two batters later, got that two-run home run. I'm sure they're hoping for something similar here. 2-1 pitch is hit in the air. Right field. Under it to make the catch is earned in one away. Quick out, and now Jaden Comilla. Second baseman, number 23, Jaden Comilla. Comilla flew out. Reached also down reached out an error, yeah. yeah. Three out of ten in this Geico City Series. Takes a strike. Yeah, Jaden, like Crew Bond, really uses the whole field when he's up there. Not necessarily going to hit you a home run. He, he may run into one here or there, but if you throw it outside, he's going to go to right. You come in, he tries to bring those hands in, just simple line drives, and kind of be one of those table setters for the big bats that the Sparks have. One ball, one strike. Breaking ball misses down and away. Well, Sparks got two runs back in the bottom of the fifth, but had the opportunity to tie, left the tying run at third. 2 1 pitch is belted into center for a base hit. Just as we were talking about, it's almost on cue. Ball kind of middle cut, did a nice job keeping the hands inside and just going up the middle. Sean kind of saying, no, yeah, I cannot believe I left that one over the middle. It's all right, only one out. Let me see if I can get that ground ball here. And for Cal Sefcik, can I hit another one really hard? Sefcik with a two-run homer back in the second inning. 
takes outside for ball one. Sefcik also fanned looking his last time up against Episcope. One-one pitch bounces away from the catcher Lester back to the screen. Comia racing around second, but he's going to stay there. Second inning of the game. Two strikes inside fastball. Brought the hands in, was able to get the barrel on it, and with some carry, maybe a little bit of win. Put the sparks up 2 nothing. Cal Sufsik, his first home run of the tournament on the tournament's final day. Now as a runner in scoring position, swings and lifts this one into the air. Left field, Bales drifting back near the warning track and hauls it in. But tagging and heading for third, Comia slides in safely. Just a little bit on the hands. Almost home run number two, but going to left, that's the way you want to go. Jared Bales doing a nice job going back, going back, staying sideways, trying to get that ball into third quickly. Comia, nice job of base running. So many more ways you can score from third, and we've seen both teams spike a ball here or there, so wild pitch could tie up the game. Trace Widerski, first pitch swinging, and with the tying run at third, pops up to second. It's caught by Holsworth, and for the second straight, straight inning, Cangelosi Sparks leave that tying man 90 feet away. 5-4 through six. The 2021 Geico Baseball City Series, presented by the United States Marine Corps, is brought to you by Geico. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. And the Marines, the battle to belong begins here. Top of the seventh inning here in our third place game between Team Elite and the Sparks from Illinois. And right now the Team Elite with a 5-4 lead here in the seventh. Drew Zemitis is coming into pitch for the Sparks. A Xavier commit, so he'll be going to college along with a couple of Bulls from Indiana who we'll see in just a little bit. Connor Mish and Brock Buckley. Zemitis typically will come out of the pen for the Sparks and now trying to hold Team Elite. And so if he can do that, the Sparks will come to the plate at the bottom of the seventh down by just one. Yeah, Drew, your typical, you know, mid-80s on the fastball, curveball changeup, curveball's probably his best pitch. We'll see how he's able to use it or we'll see if he needs to use it. Kind of a three-quarter arm slot too, so a little bit different look for those Team Elite hitters. Good job of getting ahead with that first pitch. First pitch swung on and fouled back. Jarrett Bales at the plate. This time takes a breaking ball away. Bales one for two, doubled and scored in a three run fifth for Team Elite, which has been the difference in this game today. One one pitch is lifted in the air to left and deep. Rubond a little bit of a leap, but makes the catch. Yeah, that's the proverbial, the ball caught me. I didn't catch the ball. <laughs> great job of hitting by Jared. He's had a great tournament, like you said. Got that double last at bat, and this ball smoked. Cruz like, yep, nope, yep, okay, yeah. I, that's exactly how I wrote it up. He's <laughs> laughing a little bit. <laughs> he is. He's Parker. smiling. Yeah, he's got a smirk on his face there. Still a fly out in the scorebook, right? Yeah, it's 0 for 1. First pitch outside on Parker Herndon. And what we used to always try to tell ourselves was, you know, at some point I'm going to get a broken bat flare for a base hit. So they'll all even out. That one hit in the air in deep left field. On the run is Bond. He runs out of room, a home run. Parker Herndon, a long home run to left field. And Team Elite with a big run here in the seventh. And it's six to four. Well, we had talked about Parker and a couple things. One, enough power to leave any part of the ballpark. Two, the fact that he has been struggling. First hit of the tournament, not a bad way to get your first hit though. Home run, a no doubter, did everything perfect here. Hands in, 
virtually no stride. Watch this. Gentle load and then explode. Beautiful. Head down at that point of contact, and we know the way the wind's blowing out to left. This was a no doubter. Parker Herndon with some big time power. Now 6 4. Tippett flies to center. That will drop for a base hit right in front of Radisevich. Third hit for the South Carolina commit. Very nice job. Quiet hands. Now bearing the shortstop, number 92, Hazan Zanatello. So now Zanatello, the Miami commit. Yeah, and if you're Team Elite, you want as many runs as possible. You've had the Sparks score with crooked numbers multiple times, both Thursday and today. Probably going to do everything they can to get a third or even a fourth one if they have that opportunity. 1 0 pitch outside on Zanatello. Hazan reached on an error, also walked back in the fifth, but 0 for 2 today. 2 0 pitch outside. Yeah, this is where Drew just needs to take a breath and say, okay, yeah, last two balls were hit pretty hard. Actually, the first ball was hit pretty hard too. All right, what do I feel most comfortable with? Where can I find my strike zone? Great location there. Just breathe. Go back to doing what you feel most comfortable with. See if you can induce a ground ball. All it's gonna take is one pitch and the inning is over. 3-1 pitch, runner goes, but it's outside for ball four, so it doesn't matter. Runner down to second is Tippett. Zanatello takes first. And now two on with one out, and Team Elite continuing to put some runners on. Now Tyler Thompson is going to go out Dylan to the mound. Buster. Looks like a pitching change is forthcoming. So we will take a timeout with the pitching change. Team Elite now with a 6-4 lead. Herndon a home run. Sparks trying to keep it 6-4 in the seventh. 6-4 here in the seventh and final inning. Team Elite the lead over the Cangelosi Sparks in our third place game. And here comes the Louisville commit Trey Swiderski. Shanahan, Illinois native, a kid who typically will close for the Sparks and loves being the closer, likes to be that intimidator. He's got the eye black working and now comes into a big situation here, Mike. Got a big mop of hair. Clearly, I'm jealous of that just to start with. But again, every one of these organizations is pulling some kids up from their rising juniors. It's not just rising seniors that every organization has brought here. And just like you said, Trey was their kind of number three hitter on their 16U rising junior team. But he also, like you said, was the closer. Has a good power arm, can actually touch the 90s. So again, let's just slide him in from right. Let's just say, hey, get me two outs. Let's get into the dugout and see what we can do. Now, runner at first and second is what Swiderski will inherit, and he faces Dylan Lester, who had a two-run double back in the fifth, which is a huge hit to get Team Elite three runs, and now both runners advance on the first pitch. Well, we talked about Team Elite is not going to just be happy with the two-run lead. If there's going to be an opportunity, and I'm sure they were thinking this guy might just be a one-look go, so we're going to jump and guess on the first look steal. If he looks twice, we'll stop. 1-0 pitch hit on the ground, shallow towards second, Comia to Flanagan. So the second out keeps the runners where they were. There's more and more coaches in college that are doing that as well. Even on first base, they're almost having their runners on first base kind of hop left, right, left, right. And if, if they're hopping to the now right the as the pitcher the picks up his foot, they're allowed to steal. And if not, they're hopping right back to the left if he's possibly trying to pick him off. Jackson Cook, double and a run score back in the fourth. One for three today. Yeah, another nice block by Brian Dacre, making sure those runners do not advance. That's pounded on the ground to third. Diving stop, Rolder fires across, but Flanagan, can he keep it? He cannot. 
scooped it initially, dropped it, and grabbed it again, but it allows a run to score, and it's now seven to four. Again, this was a great play by Roller, just getting a glove on it. Got up quickly, Will Flanagan at first did just about everything he could. Again, good movement, full extension, quick getting up. Again, Spikes kind of got caught in the turf when you're used to playing on dirt. That foot kind of slides. Will Flanagan, everything he could to get that out. Nice play by Rolder, but it's always a challenge when you make a diving stop at third to then get up and make yeah. a perfect throw, right? Yep. So now the runner dancing off a second, and Cook's going to get himself in a rundown. Comillo working him back towards first. Here comes the runner from third, but instead they tag out Cook. This time the Sparks did execute it right. that correctly. They did it right. But they're down three. Bottom of the seventh coming up. Sparks need three to tie, four to win. It's seven to four, team elite leading the Cangelosi Sparks in the third place game of our Geico Baseball City Series here in 2021. Episcope back to the mound. Atkinson leading off. Swings at the first pitch and flies to center field. It's caught by Tippett one away. Good pitch to hit. There is no need to take. Let get you get you, get you behind in the count. If it's something that you feel comfortable going after, let's go after it. That was a good pitch. Good swing. Just got under it a little bit. I got nothing wrong with that. Jack Zebig is the next man up for the Sparks. He's getting a pinch hit opportunity here takes a first pitch strike. Plainfield, Illinois is his hometown. Swings and misses, now two strikes. So, Another southwest suburb. Yes. Perfect for the Sparks. Sparks being aggressive, yep. as you said. You, you like that strategy here. Now 0-2. This one's hit on the ground to first, gobbled up by Cook. He'll take it himself. One out left again, and Team Elite will take third place here at the Geico City Series. Again, if you're watching this game as a player on the bench and you're seeing Sean Episcope almost every batter throw a fastball strike, you've got to come up saying, hey, even though we're down two, this now guy's now walking a lot of people. I, if I let myself go 0-1, 0-2, I'm battling so hard. So if I see that good fastball, let me take a swing. Unfortunately, two outs. Right. Now crew Bond. Bond a couple of hits in this game. He's been on base three times. He's been stranded at third three times in this game. Yep. So that's been one of the things that the Sparks may look back at later. Come up on the short end of the stick, and that could be it. Fly ball center field, tip it under it, makes the catch, and the ball game is over. Team Elite takes third place at the 2021 Geico City Series. Cangelosi Sparks took the early lead in this one, but Team Elite from Georgia scoring twice in the fourth, three times in the fifth, and adding two on for good measure in the seventh inning. They even their record in the tournament, and they finish with third place. Great game, actually, played by both. Uh, again, you're going to see high school kids are going to make a mistake here or there. We saw the Sparks not execute a first and third kind of double steal run down early in the game and then execute it extremely well in the seventh inning to make sure there was only two runs scored, not three. Sean Episcope does a good job coming in in the fourth. And able to seal things up for Team Elite. Seven to four victory. We will wrap things up when we come back. off the Cangelosi Sparks from Illinois and Team Elite wins third place here at the 2021 Geico City Series. Well, Will Tippett was one of the reasons why Team Elite was able to win this game today. Yeah, I tell you what, leadoff hitter, what do you want from your leadoff hitter? Getting on base. 
Doesn't matter where, opposite field, center field, right field. You also like a leadoff here that can run. Guess what, Will did that to the nines today. Three singles, stolen base, run scored. A guy that can play short, that can play in the outfield. What a day, what a tournament for this young man. Will Tippett is our Chevy player of the game and he joins us now down on the field. Will, thanks for taking the time. What was your approach today and why did it work for you? Um, I wanted to stay opposite field, um, see fastball, um, react to anything off speed, but I got mostly fastballs today, which I jumped all over and uh, it worked out. <laughs> well, knowing you struck out in the first inning, what was the mental approach, kind of that second, third, and fourth at bat that you did have the success? So I recognize he uh, had a curveball, pretty sharp. Um, second at bat, he left it hanging. So that's the one I hit to yep, left, left field. field. Yes, sir. And then I didn't see many off-speed pitches because I jumped over the first pitch and second pitch. You guys fell behind 2 nothing in the second inning, but you scored a lot of runs late. It was just a matter of adjustments, I take it, that you, you saw something that, you, that allowed you to exploit it. Um, yes, sir. So our team just started hitting more, um, being more aggressive, uh, especially on the base path, too. Um, and we just jumped over the fastball. Um, good team win. And your team certainly plays very aggressive baseball. Everybody's trying to make something happen. The base running, is that something that is unique to Team Elite? Yes, sir. Yeah, for sure. It's a uh, West Coast style. We want to, you know, get on base, get going, make things happen. You know, don't let the game come to us. Make it happen. All right, well, Will, thanks so much for taking a few minutes with us. Congratulations on the win and the big game today. Thank you very much. So Will Tippett and his team able to pick up the victory. Cal Sipsik with a home run in the second inning, which allowed Cangelosi Sparks to take the lead. But in the fourth inning, Team Elite got two runs back, and then they were able to tie this ball game up. Dylan Lester ended up with a two-run double back in the fifth as well. But after tying the game, Team Elite with some good base running, finding a way to get three runs. And ultimately, that would be what separated Team Elite in this game from the Sparks. Yeah, there's Dylan Lester knocking that one into left center field off the wall and allowing a couple of runs to score. And Team Elite from there able to tack on two runs in the seventh inning. And so they pick up a 7-4 to four victory over the Cangelosi Sparks. You see guys stretching. That's because we got another game coming up. That'll be our championship game. Team Elite wins third place, 7-4 to four over the Sparks. Coming up, we'll have the Canes from Virginia against the Indiana Bulls. That is coming up at 2 Eastern time, 1 Central. So make sure you don't go anywhere far because we got more baseball and it'll be the championship game here at the 2021 Geico City Series. He's Michael Huff. I'm Jordan Burke.